Now, if you are then joining me for this question six, me, I'm sitting here once off. I'm doing this once one video that I'm doing, but I'm going to break it apart. So if you have joining me here and it's your first time, it means you've missed out on question number five. Let's go back. You missed out on this question. Let's just remove everything. I worked on question 5.1, I went to 5.2, I went to 5.3, 5.4. So there are four videos that you have been missing. That's why I'm saying you need to be subscribed so that you can be notified when I do that. Subscribe now and ensure the notification bell has been turned on so that you can be notified. I'm breaking them into small parts so that you can be able to watch a video, get the concept, leave everything. I mean, when you watch it for that, maybe say 15 minutes, uh, give yourself a break. Don't continue to say, I want to watch the next, I want to watch the next. Your mind can only concentrate for a short space of time. At the maximum time you can bring yourself is 25 minutes. After that, you start being distracted and doing other things and you're wasting your time. So how do you regain your concentration? Watch the video. After watching, if it's 10 minutes or so, try to practice it yourself. And then after that, if you see that you have been reading consistently for around 25 minutes, stop. Go out, do something different, just something different. Don't go on your phone now if you're reading. The phone will make you even more tired. People don't know. They think that they're taking a break while they're just checking their messages on WhatsApp, Facebook and stuff. That makes you more tired. Forget about the phone. Go out, take a small walk. Just go out, greet a neighbor. Just go out, out of your environment. Just see something different. Watch something different at all. Don't watch the TV, of course. Watch like outside. Go out. Come back. Your mind will have recalibrated and it's ready. I know you're like, but I'm still tired. But it will be tired, but you can absorb more content. But if you sit down for five hours, you just uh, got an effective 24 minutes of the five hours. The rest you just work wasting time. It's like this. If I was just doing your graph of concentration versus time so if this was concentration how you are getting your concentration and this is the time so this is what you do you start concentrating well 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 but as the time increase somewhere here i'll say this was 24 minutes okay so you lose it so you see that you're losing it so now what happens if you take a break if you take a break you will come a bit so this graph will jump your concentration will increase, but it's still lower than the first one. It will do this. Again, let's say this was 24 minutes. It will also jump. Your concentration keeps on doing that. You see? So you are increasing your concentration, but still it's decreasing, but in an increasing way. So you've got, see, here you started understanding better, here, better, here, better. But look at someone who was reading consistently. Look, they are losing their concentration down there. So don't do that. It's not gonna work for you okay but look at this guy that was not the reason for this <laughs> let's come to the lesson question six sketch below are the graphs of the functions that f of x is cos x plus q let's look at f there is the graph of f and g of x is that for uh, negative 60 to 120 so we've got these graphs now it says write down the coordinates of the maximum turning point of g in the interval the maximum turning point of G. So where does G turn maximum? Is there? This is G max. That's the highest point of G. So what are the coordinates? You can see the coordinates. X is there and Y is there. So you start with X and Y. Remember coordinates is X and Y. So what is X? It's 30 degrees. What is Y? It's 2. That is this. Done. That was the answer there that I wanted. Difficult? I don't know, it's one mark. 6.2, determine the values of x where f is strictly increasing in the interval. Okay, the values of x, the values, see, let me underline that, values of x, and then the key part is, is strictly increasing. So how do you know that a graph is increasing? Increasing graphs, like for f, it's when the graph is going up, it's going up, and then somewhere there, you see, start going down. What about if it was for G? I can start here. You see, the graph is going up. It's going up. That those are what what they mean when say increasing. It's going up. It's going up. At that moment, I must stop. You see, this is decreasing, decreasing. Stop there. Now it's increasing. 
so that's what they uh, mean when they say graphs are increasing graphs are decreasing so now they are asking us where is f increasing and i'm saying f is increasing look at this there is the increasing for f until somewhere there there so what is it where is it from you see that x is the third the values of x so you put x in the center it's starting from what from that point which is negative 60 and where is it ending it's ending in that point which is zero then you just put these signs see x minus 60 is less than or equal to x x is less than or equal to zero we are also including the 60 and the zero and it's still zero is part of the what the increase and negative 60 so that is too much now determine the values of g and b now if they want the values of g and b determine them it's up to you how you want to do it now if i look at um look at this graph f of f of x if you look at the graph you can actually work it out let's work it out for interest sake let's start with f of x so now choose maybe that point what is the coordinate it's negative 60 is x and 0 is y so that is my f of x here and that is my x so where there is f of x i'll say 0 is equal to cos and then cos what negative 60 plus q you see that so I, ne I need to know what, what is negative cos negative 60 with my calculator there so i'll say cos negative 60 it gives me what half you see so it would be zero is equal to one over two plus q take one over two the other side is negative one over two is equal to what is equal to q negative what negative one over two is equal to q so now when you have done that you're going to say that that's the value of q when you're working it out so q is equal to negative one over two are you with me let's try the other one now for this one sine two uh, two sine bx again it's the graph of g of x you choose two points so just uh, choose any point uh let's use um the point that they gave us let's use this one okay the point that we got oh yeah let's use that let's use that point remember we said what was that point it was 30 and 2 meaning g this is g of x and this is x all right so in g of x i'll say 2 is equal to 2 sine b b times 30 or 30 b it's like divide by 2 on both sides why am i dividing because i want to re get rid of this 2 so it will be 1 is equal to sine 30b but how do i find this is same as saying sine 30b is equal to 1 let me write it like this it's more easier 30b but don't forget 30b is one thing here is equal to 1 now what do i do then i'll say 30b is equal to arc sine arc sine 1 then i can find out what is arc sine 1 shift arc sine 1 equal to what 90 so 30b is equal to 90 divide by 30 remember i need to get uh, remain remain with b so that this goes so what is b is 3 see that b then becomes 3 so i can come here and say b is equal to what 3 then that's the uh, working part i get what 2 max 6.4 use your graphs to determine the values of x for which uh, 3 cos x sine 3x minus sine 3x is greater than or equal to 0 you see there is the key thing use your graphs the moment they say use your graphs you must know this thing here they given you is linked to your graph the good part look there is 3x and we did mention that b was 3 so if b was 3 you can agree with me now that um this is 2 sine 3x so i can write g of x here let's write g of, i mean f of x is what f of x 
will be um because q is negative half is cos x minus half so it will be cos x minus 1 over 2 right g of x will be what g of x will be um 2 sine 3x because b is 3 so it's 2 sine 3x so you need to see these two into this thing you need to see them here they always try to trick you there but you need to see them there let's try to prove that what am i given i'm given 2 cos x sine 3x minus sine 3x is equal to i need to see um, if i can come up with the g of x and f of x here i know g of x is there you can see if i can say for example take out um because i need to have this let me take out this there is there it is the 2 and the sine 3x see that so if i take out 2 sine 3x see that put a bracket so i'll have here cos x and then minus now if i took out a 2 from 1 see this is uh, where the this is where they wanted to trick you there is a 1 the 2 is not common so it means there is a 1 so I, if i take out 2 from 1 a half will remain so that when i multiply half times 2 i'll get a negative 1 you see that so it's half uh so yeah, it's two uh, it will be half it will be like that which is look at this this one is here f of x and this one okay sorry 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 what am i saying i'm saying uh this one here 2 sine 3x is g of x so actually this is g of x and then bracket means times right times look at this cos x minus half times f of x so that is greater than look at the sign it must be greater than or equal to zero that's what they wanted to hide they are hiding this that go to the graph that's why they say use the graph but they hid it somehow so they are saying use the graph to say g of x the graph of g of x when you multiply it with the graph of f of x you must get a value that is greater than or equal to zero meaning you must get a positive value so how do you do that you go to the graph and say which area of the graph when i multiply i get a positive value it's it either zero or a positive value now you know how to get a positive to get a positive you say positive times positive equal to positive so it will be positive f of x times positive g of x i'll get a positive answer or a negative f of x times another negative f of x you know a negative and a negative i mean negative g of x not f of x in this case negative g of x remember these two graphs are multiplying it will give me a positive so there are two positives you can get either both are positive or both are negative now let's go to the graph from here if you look at f f is positive g is negative it will give us what negative so here it's off this is off this is off why because positive and negative it's off it's off but look let's start there let's start here what are they the graph of f is positive the graph of g is positive so we are in this region so if we start from here you can see that the graphs are positive even here positive positive all are positive positive they will still give us a positive but something changes here but it's still good what is the graph of f is negative and the graph of g is negative still we are now in this region so negative 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 all the graphs are negative until here so you can see that this is the region that they are interested in from here to here how do you write it as i said you write it start from zero it ends in what in 120 
and they said the values of x the question was uh, determine with the graph the values of x you just do that so you put that less than or equal to why are you using less than or equal to because the sign has that equal to so x is less than or equal i mean zero is less than or equal to x x less than or equal to 120. that is how you solve this you have to make it real if they wanted the other way around where they said the graph was less then you're going to choose this area which is positive and negative and you're going to say for the less is minus 60 0 again you choose that you see that that is when f of x dot g of x not greater than is less than or equal to 0 now. you get that guys this was just for practice it's a bonus for you now done i'm done here is it the end of uh, trigonometry no we have question seven question seven that is the end of trigonometry if i'm not mistaken because question eight is on measurement so yes question seven but now i have to end it up here as i say this graph i'm bringing them now in small pockets because you guys i bring in a a, a, a a video for one and a half hours want to sit for the rest one and a half hours you watch and then you start becoming I start becoming an actor and you start becoming uh, a spectator I'm acting this maths and you you're watching that is not the way maths is done maths you watch the concept you practice and the best way to do that is for me to break these videos into small parts so now I'm ending that video where I was looking at this graph it is going to continue into part I don't know which part but I'm looking at question 7 you need to follow up if you are following up you will know so if it's your first time and you're just coming in contact with this video you are like, what's happening is because you have missed out this paper let's go back to the beginning you have missed out this paper and that is great 11 paper 2 where I'm revising with you trigonometry and I have been doing from question number this one from question number five we have done it guys we did five point up to five point one point four it was one video five point two was another video five point three another video five point four another video and then we did this section now where we looked at question six